I was ordained a priest only a little while and a couple invited me over to their home for dinner. I told this story at a retreat recently. And uh, I go over for dinner and they're showing me their house and they're a little eccentric, but you know, it's always interesting visiting different people. And so it came time for dinner and we sat down at the table and the husband was one on one end, the wife on the other, I sat in the middle. But there were four place settings. And I thought, sure, well they've set a place for the prophet Elijah or they set it for the homeless person who comes to the door or whatever else. And so they put the food on the table, a nice big plate of spaghetti. And then they called Preston. And I thought, well, I don't, they don't have any children, what's going on? And all of a sudden, this yellow lab comes up to the table and sits right across from me. Now, to his credit, he waited until after we prayed. And then dinner began. And you know a lab, he's just, ah, oh, no. And the sauce is showering me everywhere. While this couple is having just a quiet conversation with me. So, Father, where are you from? How are you doing? And I just started laughing. I laughed so hard, I couldn't stop myself. I was choking. And just the, the irony of the whole thing, that a dog would be seated at the table, and they would serve something like spaghetti, and it's right across from me. This whole picture. Now, I went back after that four times. We never had spaghetti again, but it was much the same situation. And I thought, you know what, why I like going to their house so much? What you see is what you get. They're crazy, there's no doubt about it. But what you see is what you get, you know? And I thought about that often. And I told this story at a women's retreat, and the woman, who incidentally is from this parish, approached me and said, Father, our dog eats at the table too just so you know. I'll tell you who it was after Mass, just so you know. That way, if you go over to their house, you can wear like plastic and stuff like that over you. But the thing about it is there are all kinds of rules. When you're hosting someone for dinner, you have rules. And I don't know about you, but I could always tell when we were getting company because we'd work like dogs all day cleaning the house and straightening up and we couldn't eat anything the whole day because this was special. No, all those cookies are great. Well, that's for tonight. Don't go in that room. Don't sit on the furniture. Don't do anything because we have these special people coming over here. And it was almost to the point that when they finally came to the house, I didn't even want to see them <laughs> because they were the enemy. They were kind of, you know, making me uncomfortable in my own home. So we had all these rules for when we brought in the guests. But what about rules for guests? How do we act when we go to someone's house? Now the first reading from the day, it says wisdom has set her table. The reason they use that word her is because the Greek word for wisdom is Sophia. It's a feminine noun. So wisdom has set her table. Usually wisdom refers to Christ. Mary is called the seat of wisdom, okay? Jesus is sitting on her lap. So wisdom has set the table and invited for a meal. And so we are guests at the banquet. Now imagine, just for a moment, if you invited me over for a meal. And if I came in dressed as though I had painted the house that day, and the first thing I did when I sat down is I took out my cell phone and put it up on the table. And then didn't talk to you the whole time. The food eventually comes to the table, but it's okay because I brought my own food. I brought snacks or whatever else. And as I'm eating this dish that you took all day to painstakingly prepare something that I've never had before in my life, I have gum that I refuse to take out of my mouth while I'm gonna eat this food. And so finally I eat all the meal and then I get up 
and I walk out without saying a single word to my host. Just walk out. No, thank you. No, that meal was good and everything else. Do you think you'd ever invite me back again? I mean, really. So we talk about rules that the host has. Yeah, you clean the house, you torture the kids all day, you make them not eat any food, whatever. But what about the guests? And so when the guest comes to the meal, yes, we enter in and we're so grateful for the invitation. And we know that, okay, I'm putting my phone aside. I'm not going to talk to anyone while I'm in the presence of these people. And I'm going to engage them and I'm going to talk about whatever's going on in my life and listen to what's going on in their life. And when the food comes to the table, whether I like how it tastes or not, I'm going to eat it gratefully and have conversation with them. And after I eat it, I'm not gonna run, I'm gonna stay for a little while and just chat in gratitude for the meal that I've received. And then I can leave. And I don't just simply leave, I say thank you so much for the visit. I'm glad I was able to come over. Thank you so much for your time and all you did to prepare for this meal. And that's it. Today, the gospel speaks to us about Jesus' true presence in the bread and wine. They will go on to say later, this is a difficult saying, and many of them will walk away. It is a difficult saying. We live in a world where things are material, and we need to see it, taste it, touch it, hear it, smell it. It has to enter in through the senses. If we don't see it, then we make up metaphors or we make up symbols. It's very difficult. So when Jesus says this piece of bread and this cup of wine is my body and blood, and we see a piece of bread and a cup of wine, it's really hard to internalize that. That's why it's an act of faith. So if we really believe what we say we believe, if we really believe the words of Christ, then we have the best banquet in town. We have the best ticket in town here. That the table has been set by wisdom. He has invited us to be a part of him. So much does he want to be close to us that he allows us to take him into our sinful body. That's what he allows for us to do. And so we have been invited to this banquet. But how do we act as guests at the banquet? Are we concerned when that phone is vibrating in our pocket that I got to text back immediately that person who's sending me one? Or do I have to watch the time? Am I watching the time as I'm a guest at this meal? Am I talking to the host at all? Or am I silent, just kind of tolerating his presence among others? That when I receive this food, which gives me eternal life, did I bring my own food? Do I have candy or gum or anything else that is equal to that? And when I receive it, am I receiving a piece of bread or do I really believe that this is something that could be life-changing, if not miraculous for me? And then as I receive the Lord into my body, do I keep my track and just walk straight out the door as I'm coming back from communion? Or do I thank my host for inviting me to this banquet? Do I thank him for the gift of my life and the first breath that I breathe today that only he could give? And do I stay after the meal to thank him for the invitation in the first place? We all know there are norms, whether we're a host or a guest. And so as we come to this banquet, we would never want to act like a horrible guest unless we don't believe it is the Christ that we're receiving. If, we, if it is just a piece of bread and a cup of wine, then we can act as though it's common food. But if it's something more than that, we can only ever offer our very best and the gratitude that goes with it. Because this is a food that we cannot make ourselves. It's a food that we cannot get anywhere else. And of all the people, all the guests that he could have invited, he invited us. And the only proper response to that is.
is reverence and gratitude.